Um, Jason, I, you know, you were terrific in this film, but I, my complaint is we just didn't see enough of you. Well, thanks very much. That's uh, you and my mother both, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, what did he do? Leave this stuff for the DVD? No, come oh, on. Maybe the spinoff. <laughs> there you go. Iraq um, 2. What's with you and the soldiers? Because, uh, you know, but you just keep getting higher ranked, I think. In I think show. as you get older, you yeah. do get higher. I saw the first soldier I ever played, I was a sergeant. And then I think I was, uh, I was a major and a captain, I'm not my lieutenant colonel. I'm not quite sure what I am. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't, they're actually in, in Special Forces, where Briggs is the guy I'm playing, they pretty much call each other by their first names or their nicknames, and, and rank goes out the window anyway. Yeah, so whatever, you know. And I, I'm I sure I'll be a general before long. Definitely, yeah. Well, we'll get you there. There's n I, no doubt in my mind. Now, I, seriously, though, I have to ask you about working on somebody, uh, working with Paul, because how on earth do you make sense of his frenetic messes, and then it all ends up being so phenomenal? Well, I mean, it's the, what seems like chaos is very far from it in his mind. What he's doing is deliberately stirring things up to make sure in front of the camera something spontaneous is happening. I mean, he's, an old, he's an old friend of mine, Paul, so I talk about, him, talk about it to him when we're not in the middle of the madness. Uh, and it's all extremely contrived. He wants to make the most spontaneous and contemporary uh, and fresh version a dynamic version of an authentic story he can. Mm -hmm. So he throws as many real elements in as he can. So I'm surrounded by, we're all surrounded by real soldiers, just freshly back from Iraq and Afghanistan, real translators in the interrogation scene. There's all, uh, as many things are real as possible. He's constantly writing and rewriting the story. Brian Helgman comes up with this fantastic script, but then he's constantly rewriting it. And then you throw it all out the window. He doesn't want you to do any of the things that you normally do as an actor. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want you to hit your marks. Doesn't want you to say your lines. Doesn't want, he just wants things to be completely and utterly real with the highest stakes possible and let him worry about telling the story. And, uh, and that's really the polar opposite of any other director I've ever worked with. Yeah, amazing. And then, you know, you get to work, you know, just watching someone like Matt Damon work, and I was saying, that guy's a chameleon. He's, he's crazy and he's fearless. What was it like to watch He him? really was fearless. Actually, my first day's work was, I was just told, jump out of the helicopter and beat the crap out of Matt Damon. If he gets in your way, take the prisoners, that's all you want to do. But if he gets in your way, just crush him like a bug or ignore him. Paul said, you know, my very first take, I stood up, walked up to Matt and I spoke to him. Paul went, no, 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 don't do him standing talking. I Just ignore him, go into the crowd, you know, go and have a pee in the doorway or whatever the hell you want to do. Just do whatever, you can stand there in silence. You don't have to talk. There are no rules here. And I went, really? Said, yeah. But if he gets in your face, take him out. And he got my face and I took him out. And, and Matt was going, just go for it. Wow. You know, and, and I did, and by the end of that first day, Matt, black and blue. I mean, I really gave him a very, very hard time with his encouragement. And, uh, and I realized he was a real, you know, he's a real actor's actor. He's such a nice guy. Wasn't yeah. that tough for you? No, it's very cathartic for me. <laughs> I love it when you play the bad guy. I really do. Nice segue into Harry Potter, of course, because it's coming to an end, which I cannot believe, you know, and it must, it just must have been such an amazing experience for you to work on that and play someone like that. Like, well, it's God. been fantastic. But, you know, every couple of years I go and do it for a few weeks. And so it's not like it's been for Daniel and, uh, you yeah. know, and Tom and Rupert and Emma because they've been doing it pretty much solidly for a decade. Yeah. But I will miss it terribly because it's nice to know that every couple of years that uh, I can go and drop in, stick the wig on and mince around with the wand. And uh, uh, I'll miss it because actually less the shooting of it than the fact of being in those films. It gives such a lot of pleasure. I can go into a room, meet somebody, be grumpy, just put nothing on the table and give them pleasure. You know, in the rest of my life, I have to work very hard to, to give people pleasure, to make them smile, to make them be happy that I'm there. But when they know I'm in Harry Potter and they're under 10, it's, you know, it's such a great joy to them. It's a real gift. Did you get to keep the wig? I didn't get to keep anything, no. I think the wig now has a few talking engagements for time. You know what, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always great to talk to you. You are so fantastic in this. That's and again, kind. I want to see you in the sequel because we need more of you. I a, know we, a, a sitcom spin-off, I'm thinking. I think that would be good. Reality yeah. show. There's yeah. got to be something there for well, you. Well, the moustache has its own agent now, unfortunately. <laughs> I was going to ask I'm about not sure it'll work with me again. <laughs> always great to talk to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.